All right, here it is, the one piece Les Paul. Nice. I'm building several of these right now, 10. But uh, I really like them chambered, especially on a one piece or no neck joiner. Yep, because you get so much increased mid range with no neck joint. You really do. Like uh, about 7 to 10 decibels of mid range from like uh, 500 to 1K. It's just dominant in the mid range. Like a neck through, but better. Neck throughs also are known to have, you know, a little bit more mid-range, and which some people don't like. However, when you chamber these boys out, then they start to get real, real resonant, even more so than the vibration you already get from having no neck joint, no glue joints there. It, uh, you know, just the whole thing is like a big neck, basically. So, uh, you know, using the... Uh, the higher you go with the output, the worse it is for the guitar. So if you're going past, you know, 9,000 ohms, 10, 11, 12, 13, then when you get up to the dime bag Daryl thing, it doesn't even matter what the guitar is made out of. It could be plastic because, you know, the, the pickup is so powerful, it just takes over. So, you know, if you're going for a classic sound, you don't want that. You know, just get an old school 59 Fender Basement replica amp or an old Marshall. You know what I mean? No, no preamp. If you're going for one fret, uh, three, five, seven, nine, right, and uh, all the way up to be 24 frets. And this gets a 24 and a half scale. Um, and the only reason that is is I trim this back a little bit too much. I should have gone a little less on the trimming. So I got to go with a 24.5 scale. I got a walnut one over there too. But uh, yeah, I'm liking it. 24 and a half is, uh, this, this scale here is 24 and three quarter. This is typically what I do on the Gibsons. It's gonna get sprayed one more time so I'm not gonna take the tape off. But this has a Coca Cola binding on it. This has a Lignum Vitae fingerboard, which is uh, unusual. It's also a neck throw. The neck goes all the way, as you can see it. Goes all the way past the bridge. It ends about here. And uh, it's got the wrap around. This is an awesome, awesome sounding instrument. Nice uh, way I do this neck through. It's, it's pretty cool. But anyway, I'm going to spray that. But this is going to be sweet, man. This is going to be nice. It gets a big old Floyd. Do I even have the Floyd here? Here's one. It's got the big tungsten steel block on it. This thing is like super heavy. I mean, it just weighs. Yeah, man, I like the fluid uh, with the big block, with the big massive block on there, man. That's the only way to go. It's so heavy, dude. Oh my gosh, this thing is so massively heavy. It's got to weigh, I don't know, two and a half pounds. I don't even know how much it weighs. It's crazy. The weight of it is insane. The tungsten has got four times the mass of the fender block. Anyway, it helps with sustain, and uh, these guitars already have a ton of it. And I don't like to cut the ball ends off. I leave them wrapped around the tuner, and uh, Floyd says not to do that if you can help it. Don't cut off the ball ends. They say that, that uh, physically it affects the mass of the string. And I can see that. It has a big... Most of them have that little ball on there made out of brass or whatever it is on a string. Cutting that off could affect the twang, overall twang ability of it. But um, it's pretty cool. So, 24 frets, uh, 25, 24 and a half scale, 24 and 9 sixteenths, whatever it is. This